Welcome to David Warcry Club. I'm Warren, and today I'm joined by my co-hosts Fred and Zach. Tonight we'll get caught up on hobby updates and cover a number of winning lists in the month of October. Plus, get the word out for our next tournament here in Ohio. All coming up on this episode of Dayton War Pack Club. Hey, good evening, guys. How's it been? Hey, good evening. Hey, so far, so good. Yeah, it's been a while since we all been together online here, and uh, we got a lot to cover. About a month since we last did something, and right now we have enough stuff we can just do nothing but pretty much talk about tournament tournament lists and then also catch up on hobby stuff too since i actually got kind of back in the uh, kind of got back in action there oh right sounds, sounds good absolutely just a reminder if you're watching us on youtube that's the best way to experience getting more cry club but we also have the audio podcast as well so last month i led me the challenge to get involved in october and I didn't quite get everything done I set out to accomplish, but I did get some stuff done. Actually, just a couple of days ago, I managed to actually start putting paint on my iron jaws. They were already primed up and, and dry brushed, but actually putting green skin on things. So that felt good. And I painted a lot of other things green, too, and did some other stuff in the spirit of October. Built some orc commandos acquired it built and primed some cruel boys i'm hopping on the cruel boys train here uh, not a bad place to be when you get when you start looking at the lists that we got and then also while i was painting green stuff i got some blooded for kill team a different shade of green and yet another shade of green i'm also on the nurgle bandwagon so yeah i was painting a lot of stuff green this month and then Good also stuff. yeah and then also, I started doing another set of Warcry terrain. So, took taking advantage of the month of October and the last good month we have to get stuff rattle canned. And so I was like, well, let's let's get this let's get this primed here and started. So I got a lot of stuff set up to paint over the winter now. So multiple terrain projects, multiple warband projects, and some more surprises coming as well exciting so also we got some we zach's been busy here so what do you got okay starting on my left or our left i have a it's a iron golems varen guard it's a 3d print but i chopped the head off and basically just took apart a spare legionnaire that i had and some spare weapons and just put them into that that guy's hands and put an, an iron golems head on him i don't 100% have a list for them to go with, but I'm, I'll make it work. And then I have this fire giant that I 3D printed. He's a work in, I have a lot of work in progress. My, my hobby desk is actually an absolute mess. I have three 3D printed pink horrors that are uh, getting close to done. They just need some detail work. And then I have a large terrain p uh, piece that I printed that's basically a giant dragon skull that like goblins built a little house into. I'm um, hoping to get that painted over the winter. Um, and that should be a fun uh, little piece of terrain to throw into the mix uh, while playing Warcry as well. Yeah, that's going to be a huge centerpiece. Tell me about what, what paint did you use on the uh, pink horrors there? Okay, so what what I did with the pink horrors is I've just recently started priming everything in matte black. And then I'm just dry brushing on a uniform gray and then a another lighter dry brushing of a lighter gray than that. You can actually see it. It's the same kind of dry brushing style that I'm doing on the fire giant. Zenithal. Oh. Yeah, Zenithal. A Zenithal with uniform gray and then a lighter gray. And then from there, I used the dark purple speed paint and then came over it with some, I believe it's like alien pink. <laughs> I have to look at the pink color. It's uh, Warlock Purple to highlight the the pink horrors. I'm going to hit the tongues up probably with some of the the red speed paint, Slaughter Red speed paint to take them into more of a tongue color. And then just some detail work on the eyes and stuff and the fire in the one guy's hand. So they should be close to ready here pretty soon. Okay. And are you doing blues and brimstones then too? 
Yeah, I have to I have to source some of those out. But yeah, I definitely need to get at least if I'm playing three pink horrors, I should probably have, I don't know, three or four of each of those as well. Yeah, because the split is into each pink splits into two blues, each blue splits into one brimstone, so six and six, I think. Yeah. Okay. But I mean the likelihood of having all of them at the same time is it's not high. Well, it depends on depends on how you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all right, and then on Discord, I it, it is it is October, and I did throw out the challenge to anyone else on Discord to to uh, sh- to share their October plans. So Rob Girth Steven shared some work in progress for his Iron Jaws. We're going to see a little bit more of his Iron Jaws later as well, but he's kind of doing the whole metal priming, sort of the the same way I started mine as well, right? You, if you just start with metal, there's it's really there's if you just start with metal and kind of do it that way, it's you a lot of the work of trying to get the 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 signature yellow armor is kind of done for you. Yeah, that yellow armor. <sighs> yeah. I can't stand it, but I I respect the hustle on it. Yeah, yellow armor is tricky, and actually you'll it, it's interesting. Yeah, he kind of got the effect anyway even though he mm-hmm. started with all that silver when we see the, the finished product. And then also Mike, our more enthusiast. So he's got a couple placeholders in there, but his next kit bashed war band is, is uh, street sharks based. It looks like you can see his, his grunta in the back and he's got a whole lot more modding he's going to be doing to him. So can't wait to see the, the finished result for that. Good stuff. I like I like green sculpt green stuff sculpting. Yeah, he's he's a wizard with that, right? We saw his we saw the monsters, and we're gonna see some more from him too. Spoiler alert. So, but uh, yeah. So while we're talking about these guys here, well, here's Girth Demon. We're gonna first we're gonna start talking about the October Tabletop Simulator League results. So so this again dur- this was during the month of October. Rob Viscount, Rob and, and Mike kind of organized the league for this month. Salty's organizing it for November, so they're kind of switching off with that. And if you're on Discord, you see a lot of games going on at any given time, which is really, really cool. And you hear people talking about the games, and it's it's obvious that like the, the folks that are putting in the reps and putting in the games in this league, they're definitely getting better, learning a ton of stuff. If you caught tabletop and beyond winning war cry they had javi on and javi was talking about all the the tactics and stuff like that too so there's definitely like an elevation of of overall gameplay here so we're covering rob first because the scoring for this league was a little unusual we're going to focus mainly on the win loss results but but rob actually wound up winning this league because he had the most overall victory points over the course of four games so, but putting that aside or, or any sort of scoring, the list is very solid here. So what we have is a uh, variation on, on the typical Osiarch Bone Reapers list that we see. So it has a, a Mortec Hecatos at 105. And it also has, and then for its actual threats, it has the Night Haunt, the Wielder of the Blade from uh, Necropolis Stalker with Spirit Blades. Morgas Harbringer with Spirit Halberd. And he's got room for four more tech guard with the, the great swords there. So 955 points and eight models. Would be obviously a, a great place to slot Divine Blessings. That's like a great use of Divine Blessings when you have like just shy of enough points to fit in your last model. But the good models, obviously, the 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 Mortec Guard are on the list there of like just that super cheap chaff. They're they're tough. I like Necropolis Stalkers a lot. I like the Mortec Hecatos. The Wielder of the Blade is really interesting. Yeah, uh, I was looking at that one too. And what really sticks out to me is the the attack profile or the damage profile, I should say, the strength and damage profile is nice, but the the two attacks um, just feels like it could be a, a lot of whiffing. So Yeah, like, hi- historically competitive 
mindset has been like the like the Croxagores and what there's a couple other ones. There's one from Curse City that has two attacks, like two high strength attacks. The, the Kusari, Kusari Night Guard. Yeah. And the 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 Gut Lord before it got buffed used to have two attacks. And you do run the risk of of getting no damage out of your like 175 point model. But it's reasonably fast um, flyer for with good damage. And in, in this game, a lot of the cavalry units tend not to have great damage output. So it's definitely filling a really specific role. And I don't mind it. So I should mention, if you hadn't guessed, you'd, you'd mentioned the blessings. For all of these events that we're talking about, the blessings were allowed. Okay. And so, in this yeah, case, bonus attack blessing on there seems yep. great. So right. So bonus attack blessing on the wielder of the blade is is a is a no brainer. I I'll leave, you know, I'll leave it as an exercise to the to the to the listener or the viewer to see where else they might have put the blessings without having to ask Rob where he was putting them. But twenty five points for a attack blessing, I believe, for a, a smaller model on a larger model. I think it goes up to strength blessings also kind of makes sense. Maybe on the stalker with the blades. Yep. You can also invest a little bit in the toughness of your necropolis stalker or your Morgast harbinger. That's a lot of points tied up in those models with four toughness. You know, when you have this many points left over, you definitely have a lot of options to customize. I think that you add one attack to that wielder of the blade and it becomes a genuinely threatening model. Although a little glassy, toughness four, 20 wounds for what's going to end up being like a 200 point model, but um, certainly would be capable of, of being a mobile damage dealer. Yep. And so we, we talked about the execution when we did our blessings episode a couple months ago. Remember, I, I specifically brought out the Night Haunt Executioner mm -hmm. uh, uh, as, a, as a possible target for getting an attack blessing, right? Because uh, it's a high point, a high damage dealer with two attacks. And uh, it turns out Wielder of the Blade from the Bladeborn is the exact same profile. Um, it, it gains the <clears throat> some additional abilities for the rune marks and being in Bladeborn. So, for example, so Swift Judgment is an is ability that's added to the Wielder of the Blade. This is the, otherwise, it's the exact same points cost. Yeah, so it's yeah, that's a good so ability. Strictly superior. Attacked on, you know, you can get up to a full activation or a full action out of a double, which is always good efficiency. Yeah, you could put a lot of damage out, moving very quickly across the board. I, I think it's really interesting because obviously we don't normally think of like going to night haunt in specific to get damage. Right, like I, I've allied them in before, but it's almost always to get mobility because they're not known as like a real high damage faction, right? They're like, you pay a lot of points for their movement and they fly, but typically their, their damage output is low. So it's a good, it's really interesting to look at them and see uh, an opportunity to bring in a mobile damage dealer. Yeah, so, but as a six move flyer though, it's a cheap flyer because it's yes. only move six. It's not a fast flyer. You, the blessing fixes the attack problem, and then also you have that charge. And then all three of the of the hammers in this group have a charge ability, right? The stalker has the really good double one, and even the morgue has. You got to spend a triple for it, but that's what you're using all your doubles and triples on right here. You are while the rest of it, while the <clears throat> while the rest of the models are kind of just moving slowly towards objectives. You have your three hammers, and they all can get into fights very very quickly. Yeah, good stuff. Welcome to the call, David. Hey. How's hey, it going? Good. Glad you have you on. Yeah, we're, this is just the first list we're talking about right now. So, yeah, good OBR list here. So, second place in the league, and there were no undefeated out of four rounds here. Malachiah, who played Caradron Overlords, and he played Company Captain. Not two, not three, but four Eater Cannons. Filled the rest out with privateers and also had a, a lordling <clears throat> to, to fill it out. Now, do we know what faction the lordling was? Because this would be under the old Cities of Sigma rules. I do not know. I believe it was Tempest Eye. I, I assumed when I looked at it that it was for as a cheap Tempest Eye 
Lord. Yeah, that would be my assumption, although I think there's another city rune mark as well. But so so not knowing what that is exactly, there's a lot of interesting things going on with this list, despite the fact that it only has a couple different types of models in it. So so I think that Courage and Overlords is probably the best competitive faction in the game right now. I think that the results win loss record that the the salty sea put together puts it in the top three, if I remember that correctly. And in terms of just raw win loss percentage in in tournament play, but there's a lot of different ways to build it, like a lot. There's a bunch of different heavy weapons you can bring. You can have flying guys, not flying guys. So this is a look that that I personally haven't seen before. Obviously, it's a ton of Aether cannons. But what interests me about that is not only is it a ton of Aether cannons, but it only has one source of fight for profit in yeah. the list. So without knowing how the deployment groups are set up, I'm assuming that the company captain gets grouped up with like a bunch of Aether cannons, potentially all four. That is that is correct, yeah. So I in, in the way that we format the, the list for the show, I don't put the groups in because I don't always have them, but that is correct. It was a company captain and four Thunderers in one group, and then you had two groups of just four cheap guys yeah. each. Now, so, go ahead. So I'll say... I'll, I'll say that I'm a little biased. I, I don't like that strategy because it's like an, it's a really imbalanced strategy. Like if you start in certain, in certain missions or certain deployments, you're just going to this. you if you start with that group, killer group on the table, you're just going to like blow everybody away in groups, in games where maybe you're, they're coming on in turn two and you can stop it. Then you get beat. So I don't like us. I don't like an imbalanced strategy like that. It feels kind of gimmicky to me, but I can't argue with the effectiveness. So the the thing about it, okay. So either cannons have a ten inch range. So depending on deployment and depending on activations, like who gets to go first and whatever else, assuming you get all of that kind of the way that you want it, you can, there's not a unit in the game that you can't kill with that deployment group, right? But the problem I see with it, you kind of hinted at it, that like, if you're going to come in on round two and in a lot of deployments, it, you come in on round two and if your opponent wants to, they can kind of meet you right where you're going to deploy if they choose to to deploy that way and your 110 point aether cannons have 12 wounds four toughness and their melee profile is two three one three and fight for profit can pump that up to like what three three one three or, or even if you really you know have it go off perfectly you can have four three one three but any halfway decent melee unit is going to kill like two of them at a time so, so if someone manages to close with you, you don't have any good fallback there, except to like shred them to pieces with your Arknot privateers, which is a thing you can do. You know, you can make them like try to cross in front of your firing lanes of your seven Arknot privateers, and and they'll put out a lot of damage um, at range. So this is going to be really deployment and firing lane centric. Like this is major gun line, like pure yeah. gun line. I kind of like it, but you don't have a plan B, right? Because you don't have like a melee hammer that can go steal an objective or intercept, you know, someone's cavalry piece that's trying to come down on your, your thunder. So you really have to make sure that you're you're lined up and deployed to be kind of complementary and, and make sure your your shooting is is going off every turn. Your lordling, right? He's not gonna like swoop in and, and save you in a melee situation. <laughs> One thought I had was that, you know, your your other two deployments could be focused on securing your your turn two deployment or your round two deployment. You know, like, oh I, I have these seven privateers. And I'm I'm gonna use them to 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 buffet my 
my round two deployment. Um, oh, so, yeah, you could you can yeah. Tempest Wind slingshot or you, you in this case, you could Tempest Wind slingshot your a privateer group into whatever group might intercept round two Thunderers. Yeah. Keep, keeping in mind, though, that you don't necessarily ideally want to get tied up in melee with the units that you want your Aether Cannons to kill, right? Because they can't then shoot in. That's a good point, yeah. So, so you know, the, the way you, you have to play KO gun line specifically, because there's other ways to go, right? Like the guys with pikes are pretty good, and some of their leaders are decent melee units, and you can build more of a mixed uh, group or, or a melee-focused group, but gun line, you have to play a little different because you really have to kind of tap dance around when you want to be engaged to tie units up and when you want to like try to steer around them to let your big guns fire in it because that's where all your damage is like your argonaut privateers aren't going to kill anything in in melee they're just going to soak damage and all your killing is going to be done via shooting so you really have to be in com control you know use your activation advantage to be in control of when you get tied up in melee and when you don't. If you do that, I think it's very effective. Privateers are insane. Aether cannons are really good. Fight for Profit is the best triple in the game. There's a lot of good things here, but this is obviously very all in on that concept. And I think it's really interesting that not only did it do well, it did reason. I mean, three and one is a really solid record with a list that is this binary, right? Yep. <clears throat> So I don't know what happened in the game that he lost or who he lost it to. I I have the Google Doc. I'll put the, I'll put the link to the Google Doc with the with all the results and lists with the deployment groups in the show notes. But I do know that in the fourth round, there was one person that had a chance of going undefeated. Gray on Skaven was about, could could have gone undefeated, but he ran into to this to this guy in the fourth round, and. The Aether Cannon started on the board, and they blew away a Storm Fiend in one in one turn. Easily. Easily, yes. Yep. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that it was even close. That's a lot right. of firepower. But, you know, the thing that would terrify me if I was playing a list like this, and I've, I've been playing a lot of KO recently, the thing that would terrify me this is like a Varen Guard, right? It's like if you don't get to shoot it down first, its ability to move in, kill your company captain and then you just have all these aether cannons like are going to be having to disengage and shoot it and like how many can it track down and kill before you shoot it down that kind of thing would have me very nervous but yeah if you catch your opponent's key units out in the open you're going to melt them cool list yep moving on here also at two one and one we have adam from the channel war games on toast Playing Cruel Boys. So his choice of leader was a Bolt Boy boss, actually. Three Gut Rippas with Wicked Sticka. Stab Grot. Shank from Cunning Crew. And then allying in a Brute Boss with Boss Choppa. A Brew Git and a Rock Gut Trogoth. So now we're starting to see Destruction Soup with a Cruel Boys as a base now instead. We, you know, we're using Gut Rippas as the kind of the baseline there. 940 points, nine models. So the obvious places here, you can put an extra attack on your Rock Gut Trogoth, which would be very good with your Divine Blessings. I don't know what else you would work in there. You could definitely buff up your Brute Boss a little bit. Yeah, Brute um, Boss with an extra attack makes sense. Yeah, the 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 Divine Blessings tend not to be as good on your ranged units but you can add strength, I think. Yes. But you can't add number of attacks. Um, so so the Bolt Boy boss has the, that sniper ability where they can crit on a 4+, plus if they haven't moved. So it's something I, I was working on a lot of lists with that as sort of like you're, after they nerfed Thunderfists, like Bolt Boy bosses are good at doing things like killing other Brugits or killing company captains, you know, stuff like that, those those support heroes or support allies because they can kind of like crit on demand at range and put out enough damage to kill those those smaller models. So if you're worried about the Brugit lists or 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 your fight for profit lists, bolt boy bosses kind of make a lot of sense as a good answer to those. 
And of course, gut rippers are just really resilient, right? They are just really, really tough for for chaff models. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't put it on the slide here, but there's another slide using Krubois as well. You also have the Krubois reaction. Oh, hold on. So yeah, with stab grot and shank, and the and the gut rippers, you, they can set up cut and trap with one of the big heavy hitters there. Yep. You see another example of that as well. They don't put out the most insane damage, but you have your Rocka Trogoth and your Brute Boss to buff up with your Bruget to do damage. And your Gut Rippers are tough. They have that, not only do, are they have a lot of wounds, but they have that like built-in toughness of two-inch range where they can, you know, kind of avoid melee with some other units for an extra turn. So they are, they're great damage sponges while you let your your get just you know rain down destruction with your heavy hitters I, I think it's a really cohesive list yep bolt boy boss is interesting also a lot of times we were, last time we were looking at lists we saw a lot of killer bosses but the bolt boy boss is 10 to 20 points less yeah i, I think the bolt boy boss is really i cooled off on him a, a little bit but if you see a lot of lists with these kind of support heroes that need to be killed, he's very good at doing that for a relatively efficient price. Yep. Speaking of support heroes, also, again, cruel boys, or if you're bringing in Cunning Crew, you have access to Shank. So you have a netter, a two plus netter, which isn't bad either. Yep. Yeah. Again, just a nice little efficient in faction netter there solid obviously very very fragile but but you're bringing in for the ability so yeah uh 55 points for that in faction is, is is nice one of the things you might be able to do if you cared about keeping the stab rot and shank alive to keep activations is four plus four wounds at 15 points so you can yeah. get strength on strength or attacks on one model and then probably still have points left to, to buff the the wounds on stab rot and shank if you think that might be a concern yeah that probably buys you like a full activation of the kind of model that someone's going to want to use to kill shank right like they're going to try to kill it with their chaff models you don't want to waste full activations of like your heavy hitters killing a six wound model so yeah that makes sense next up we got mike sansom <clears throat> he's been tearing up quite a bit with spire tyrants lately so in this league he ran uh, pit champion, three best of guard destroyers, three pit fighters with net. So those guys are the, the kind of the, the main pillars of, of Spire Tyrants. And with the points he had left over, he run, he ran Scabic Plague Seeker from, from the new Underworlds, from the Underworlds Warband. We are so seeing nine, some cool allies. Yeah. <clears throat> So he's got he's at 960 points, eight models. I believe the default choice for blessings here would be to give Scabic plus one strength. Sure. You can also give Bestigore Destroyers plus one attack as well, potentially. So Bestigore Destroyers have a great stat line: three five three six for 145 points. Scabic has a triple, which is essentially a rampage functions citations essentially uses it on himself and it's either a triple to make a double move or a triple to make a double attack if he's already engaged i really like scavic's profile just in general like without even considering abilities 160 for a two inch reach four three two four six inch move does have just four toughness but that but 20 wounds, he's going to he's gonna be able to stick around for a little bit and also put out some damage. You can also, you know, manipulate that two-inch reach to, to you know, get into combat when your opponents are not. So I, I really like that unit for that price. Yeah, he's he's clearly all, the all-star from that, from that war band. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the Skaven players are liking him. Very cool. Best of Gore Destroyers are, are sweet. You get what? Like, how many do you get in a box? You get um, one box. That's yeah. what I thought. Of yeah. And trust me, I've looked for extras elsewhere, and they are hard to find. So I have a plan. I think you just, that... 
Go ahead. Yeah, so I have a plans that box of Bestigors that you gave me, the leader, the Gnarlhorn. I'm just, he's going to be Bestigor Destroyer number two. I don't see myself playing this list, but I do see the, I do see myself playing two Bestigors, and there's a, another list here we're, we're going to talk about uh, right after this one. I have never played with or against um, these particular, this particular faction. So, um, the, like, uh, my major knowledge of it is, is you have nets and you have best of destroyers, which we see on full display here. Yeah, that's pretty much all you need to know. It's just a, just a, these, they just got a big pile of stats overall, plus the nets. Cool. Good use of, again, a good use of creative looking around to find very specific things you want from an ally. And, and bringing them in here. We've seen that a lot in these lists, and it's really cool. Yep. And the other thing about this league is you see some lists, again, it's a friendly league. People are kind of doing this, you know, it's a short-term deal, and they kind of use it to, to try things out. There's no prizes on the line, just kind of bragging rights and stuff like that. So if you wanted to if you wanted to get in on the, on the tabletop simulator, simulator league, you just try whatever wacky things you know, you might want to just do for a few weeks. So another list that actually did well. So Mike, this this was at Salty's tournament that he ran. So he ran Spire Tyrants there as well. There you can see the models that he put together. He talked about this when he was on Tabletop and Beyond as well and showed these off. So you you cut a Bestigore Destroyer, you cut Skabic, and you play Orgrid Myrmidon instead which kind of fits in with the whole theme of the, with the, with the war band. And you can see his, his conversion work he did here. He did most of this work over the course of like two days, right before the tournament. Nice. Yep. Very nice. I love it. And I believe the way that the points worked. So he had 920 points, seven models with that set of, with that configuration. Pit Champion, two Destroyer, Myrmidon, three Pit Fighters with the net. And what I believe he was able to do was put plus one attack blessings on the Bestigore Destroyers and plus one attack on the Myrmidon. So that makes the Myrmidon, I can't, the Bestigore Destroyers go to four, five, three, six. And what are the stats on the Myrmidon? The Myrmidon guy. Dave, Dave you should know. Three, well, like, the attack profile yeah. yeah three five four eight yeah so the myrmidon goes to four five four eight then which is really scary yeah that's right yeah. there that's 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 ogre leader type damage yeah that's that's how i plan to run myrmidon a lot now with blessings is to give him the extra attack that's like a crusher I really like this list. The thing that's really throwing me off, though, we got the Hulk. You know, we got Hulk Hogan. We got Macho Man. Big Show, Undertaker, Stone Cold, Mankind. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. But then we got Nacho Libre. <laughs> it's a bold <laughs> choice. It's, it's, it's really pulling me out. Now, is, <laughs> is Big Show the Mermaid on, I'm guessing? No, I guess so, yeah. 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 I would have liked to have seen, like go with classic the rock or you could go with ray mysterio ray mysterio he, he said he tried he said he tried to do the rock but the rock did not have the rock was hard to model because he didn't really have a lot of distinguishing features hmm. i mean other than like the, the people's eyebrow well I, you yeah. know the other one i was thinking was you could do sting oh that'd be a good choice yeah very distinctive yeah with the face paint Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, that'd also be a good one. Rick but, Slayer. long story short, it's a great concept. It looks great because they're like supposed to be gladiators and it, it all ties together and I love it. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really excellent. Oh, yeah, whoever whoever's this is, I, I'm more enthusiast. I'm just giving you a little bit of guff. These are amazing. Congratulations on an amazing looking list and amazing looking models. The Hogan is, is excellent. I'm really into the Hogan. With the the Hogan hair. is A+. Plus, yes. It, keep in mind, this was like 24 hours of painting. <laughs> he, was, he was telling me he was like sleeping in the car on the way from Madison up to Minnesota. It's awesome. 
Back to the league, though. Again, we got another top finish from Bobby. Yep. Pretty just pretty storied record. You know, a lot of good finishes. Got that Mermit on. Got the Mermit on. Yep, you got the Mermit on. He's a big proponent as well of giving the Mermit on plus one attack. He was telling me it was very, very effective for him in this league. So yeah. only six models is the first takeaway, right? So your your models, individual models have to do a lot of heavy lifting. What I think is really interesting about this is this is base horns of a shut. Correct. The Ruinator Alpha is like not an exciting model. <clears throat> it's fine, but it's not like you don't bring horns of a shut to get because you want a Ruinator Alpha, right? There's like Chaos has a lot of options of good heroes. So you bring it because you want the Shatterers. So this list is taking a Ruinator Alpha and then only gets two Shatterers. So, I mean, like on paper, this list could be almost anything. Right. Yes. Because it's so many allies in here. And I think that's really I mean, I like Shatter. Well, Shatters are we'll, really good. We'll see more from we'll see more from Javi as well. I, I don't know. I don't know what I, I think this is something he was trying to just te- just to test the proof of concept of <clears throat> a certain combination, because if uh-huh. you think if you think about it, you can get 55 point chaff models from Slanesh Mortals as well. True, but Shatterers are like good fifty-five point shaft models. Um, they have they have spears. They they just outperform their fifty-five points pretty significantly. So if you're looking for cheap chaff, they're they're a really really good choice. I mean, obviously, like the really sexy thing about horns is the flamethrowers, but like Shatterers are also like crazy good. So so that I see, and then you bring in Vasilik. And Slake Slash, who who had a lot of hype when Slake, when they first came out, and haven't seen much of, but really good model. Yeah, Slake Slash is good. If I had the more, yeah. if I had more points, I mean, obviously you give Orgrid Myrmidon a blessing. You give probably Slake Slash a blessing of your choice. Strength to make them four, five, three, six. That pay that. There's all your blessings points there. But you could do the same. You could do something like that for Basilic as well, potentially. So, so I just wanted to look it up to make sure I have these right. But the Shatterers for 55 points, you get two wins range, three attacks, three strength, one four damage, move four, three toughness, 10 wounds. That's really, really good for 55 points. Did he yeah. not, did he not have a third Shatterer or was he leaving room for blessings? I this imagine is, it's delivered. This, this is blessings. leaving room for blessings. This is tabletop okay. simulator league. So you okay. have access. There is no there is no issue with access to models whatsoever. Right. Okay. Yeah, I imagine it's just to get those blessings on your on your heavy hitters. Get no, some like, speed in this list, get some some heavy hitting, get some durable chaff. Yeah. So I can see it. I can see it. No, in, in these events where they're allowing blessings, especially where they're allowing blessings, sort of like what we're doing with our events, where they're allowing blessings and you're and it's not set in stone tied to the list, which I would which is what I believe the case is. Otherwise the lists would have had the had them locked in. Yeah, Javi, Mike, and Rob, all three of them have been leave a, a liberal amount of points in their lists. Or blessings. And then also Javi was kind of talking about this as well on, on Tabletop and Beyond podcast. It's in part because the missions were published and it wasn't like the Rumble Pack where the missions obviously favored swarm war bands. There was there was killing missions and missions where you were where it benefited you'd have the biggest, biggest, toughest, meanest fighter on the field. So these six, seven, these six or seven model war bands weren't at a huge dis- disadvantage. Cool. Yeah, good stuff. I think it's interesting that we've seen a bunch of Ogroid Myrmidons as opposed to Fomoroid Crushers. They're pretty similar. I tend to like the Fomoroid Crusher myself a little bit better. So it's interesting to see people decide on the Myrmidon. I they think both similar things. I, I think. 
the difference is the abilities. The Myrmidon's abilities are are just better than the Crusher's, I think. Yep. Yeah, but I think the Crusher gets better stats for the same points, and those are always active. Like he has the Crusher has five more wounds and an extra point of strength for five yeah. less points. And to, to me, my thought is when I'm when I'm picking between the two, the stats are always there every round, and the the Myrmidon abilities that make him better cost dice. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I had. I, just think I it's had... interesting. I had a similar I had a similar internal decision to make as well between Mermanon and Crusher because I'm putting together a Horns of Hatchet warband and there's a I'm using a, a stand-in model for either a Mermanon or a Crusher and an, an, I kind of want to have the Mermanon but the base size is too small is easy he'll fit right exactly on the on the full Mer- on the FOMO crusher size base so i i'm worried that like you know i'm committing to a FOMO crusher here for this for this project and won't be able to switch to the Myrmidon, but i'm just going to kind of go with it at this point the, the other thing to keep in mind too for me for my my horns of the shut list which i like a lot um i'm at exactly a thousand points with the FOMO, so I actually don't even have the five points for the Myrmidon if I wanted it. And there's no clean way to cut five points from the list. So, you know, that's that's another thing too. I mean, I don't I don't think there's a wrong answer between them. They're they're similar enough. I think it's just personal preference. Go with whatever one yeah. you think you want a game plan around. Yeah, I, I chatted a little bit with Javi. He really loves the Myrmidon, though. Uh, he thinks it's worth the five extra points. I mean, I would marry my Myrmidon if I could. <laughs> Back to KO here. So here's another take on KO, a little more balanced. So this is Andrew E. Goes by Kalor on Discord. So he's got two Endermasters with Endron Harness. Two Thunderers with either Cannon. Four Arcanauts. And he's allying in a Bloodrack Medusa to do his 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 heavy lifting in melee 975 points nine models i really like blood rack medusa i don't know if i like committing that many points to it oh she's but so it's, a, good, though. it's such a good model yeah so so i love the blood rack medusa I, I think that it's a spectacular unit it does a lot of things really well one of the things that it does for a lot of lists is it brings a for you know for factions that don't have like an a plus triple it brings a really good triple right <clears throat> the only problem uh, that i see in this list is you're competing for triples with fight for profit and that's going to be a tension right because fight for profit is really good also but they're going to be usable in different situations if you need to lock down a specific enemy model a big heavy hitter the the blood wrap medusa is going to do a very good job of that and then you can always melt it with your aether cannons later the the this list it, it is a more balanced list we talked initially about that first ko list and how if melee good fast melee units could be a challenge for it because like once they close with your aether cannon deployment group they can, they get, they can get a, di- a free disengage on the triple, I think. So, like, they can step back and shoot you, but, like, it, it, it does kind of gnarl things up for you. Here, if you, like, charge into the Aether Cannons, you're going to be met with an Endron Master, with an Endron Harness, who is a very effective melee unit, especially with Fight for Profit pumping up those attacks. My only problem with it, and I, I say this about a lot of KO lists, it's just purely a, a building philosophy thing for me i'm not saying it's necessarily wrong but is that when you put points into units that you're putting all their points into melee stats in ko you got to be really careful with how you utilize them because you don't want to tie up enemies that you want to be shooting with melee units right like you don't want to move your engine masters up and engage melee units that you want your either cannons to shoot so you just got to be really cautious. You have to really have a good plan for how you're going to utilize them. 
as long as you do that, nothing but good models in this list, top to bottom. Yeah, that's why I put the Ender Master on there to kind of talk about them a little bit. I, I knew you'd mention that, and I know that you prefer the Admiral over the Ender Master. Yeah, I Admiral think. can stand back and shoot with 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 the rest of the deployment group. Now, is that shooting profile worth the points you're paying? Not necessarily, but if you're going to burn the triple on fight for profit, the leader can stand there and gun line down with the rest of the shooters and then also perform counter charge stuff right with a good melee profile that's my preference but you know you got to be careful about charging into combat against ender masters for sure so so i get it they're very efficient but i like to get that full value out of my fight for profit if i use it i want everyone in the deployment group to be able to to use it effectively which is how I prefer to build around that. I play three fight for profit targets, one for each deployment group, and they can all shoot. But that's not the only way to do it. Obviously, you know, the results here is a three, one good result. And list is obviously much more melee heavy and you can definitely build that way. Your arc knots are so efficient that you're going to be able to put a lot of bodies on the board. And as soon as your opponent, like you can pressure your opponent into moving in ways they don't want to move and then shoot them to pieces. There's, there's, you just have to be really strategic with how you play it. That's going to be the main trick because, because it's so binary, right? Some of your units are only good at shooting and some are only good at melee. You have to use them in their activate them in the right order and put them in the right deployment groups to get value out of them. And, and making a mistake there is going to waste a lot of points. So it just takes a lot of attention. It plays a lot different than, than a lot of other factions when you build them that way. Yeah, it's a good point about the whole... Have, it's nice having flexible units that can do two modes. But again, like you said, it's very, you got to be very careful to make sure you're, you're using them in the right way and using the right mode. Another example of that that we're going to see here is Gray Rostrom, Uncle Death on Discord. Triple Storm Fiend list. Two Storm Fiends with Rattling Cannons, one with Doom Flare Gauntlet, and he's got his points filled out with Scritch Sp Spike Claw and so, a Hungering Skaven. And the old Hungering Skaven. So Scritch can bring back the minions, is that That's correct? correct? That's correct. I'm, I'm adding it right now, actually. I don't know if that's like a major synergy this list is built around, but it is something you can do. Hungering Skaven can move as fast, can move up quickly and grab an objective or whatever, do what it's going to do, die and come back later, which is totally legit. Resurrection abilities, even after the nerf, are still really strong. So, so this Storm Fiends are, with Rattling Cannon specifically, are kind of... The, they do both things well, right? Like, they can stand and shoot really effectively. 4424 four, four is, like, a really good shooting profile in, in Warcry. But, like, if someone charges them, they're their own counter charge, right? Like, they're actually, like, more damaging in melee than they are at shooting. So, they can stand, threaten to stand back and shoot. And if your opponent doesn't want to get shot to death and, and tries to move up, they can move up and meet them because they're fast and killy. So they kind of do the do both things. They're not binary like your Ender Masters and stuff are. They give you a lot of flexibility there. Of course, they're very expensive, but they're tough too. I mean, it's, they're just really good units. You don't see them on the table as much, but they're really good. Well, you see them. You see them quite a bit more now. Gray played at at Nova Open as well, and he's he sold me on the he. I was already kind of wanting one with rattling cannons he sold me on the idea of maybe potentially two now i had chatted with him <clears throat> and he agrees uh i've said it on here before that you know my my one concern with the rattling cannon version is that you're tempted to shoot back just you're you're tempted to sit back and shoot with the rattling cannons when the best thing you can the best thing to be doing is could be the range profile makes it tempting to sit back and shoot with the rattling cannons when the best thing and the thing that you should be doing is running those things straight into combat. And so you may as well just specialize with the melee version. 
and Gray kind of he kind of said that yes, you you know he likes having the flexibility, but you absolutely have to kind of pick the right mode and the right in the right job for them. Yeah, yeah, but also keep in mind that your your melee ones are significantly more expensive. That's um, right. Yeah, and then so, in a yeah, and for a war band that is is hurting for points anywhere every for a war band that's hurting for points and model count yeah every point matters so if you try to put in two doom flayers you over to you're spending another 50 points right like 25 yep. points a piece so so that's not nothing and they fight in melee better than most models do yeah, I, I think one rattling cannon storm chain is very good. I think the second one, I'd have to be kind of talked into it a little bit. But yeah, it's a good point. I, again, I got it. Well, I'm sitting on two on sprue yet, so one of them is going to be a rattling cannon. The other one, I'm not sure. It's either going to be a rattling cannon or it might be warp grinders, the four five four eight version. Yep, those are good too. There's really only like one bad storm fiend, and it's the the grenade launcher one. Uh, what it's called? But warp fire launcher? No, he's got like a the the doom the doom wind globes or whatever they're called, the poison gas ones. But other than that, yeah, they're they're a very solid unit. So five models is really ambitious. I like it. I like my elite armies, and this is certainly one of them. Three, uh, your opponent doesn't have a lot of safe places to hide with three storm fiends off the board. Yeah, and I I love Scritch Spike Claw and having a resistible scaven there. I like the idea of that. There, I have a handful of lists that have Scritch plus like two of the guys from his warband, mm -hmm. just because it is a way to virtually give yourself a way to virtually give yourself activation advantage back right if a guy dies you can bring it back so even though you might only have like seven models in your warband virtually you have eight or nine if you're get off some reses yep and, and scritch is really i like the profile you get for his points obviously a little squishy but a, a really solid 125 point profile. yeah at, one, at 125 very affordable all right, so that was it for the Tabletop Simulator League. But then now we got another one. So so Rob ran a tournament up in New Jersey at Red Seal Gaming. They ran Power Struggle, Loot and Pillage, Reaper, Ley Lines. The tournament pack also had additional secondaries added to it. So none of the, it wasn't straight up the, the vanilla versions of it. So, for example, I think they did... Like, for example, on Power Struggle, they had added a secondary that, which is an objective mission. They added in a objective, a secondary where you had to have the most toughness within the center of the field or something like that. So something right. to kind of balance out the advantage you get from high numbers or the number that, to, or something to balance out the advantage you get from a swarm war band. Yeah, I, I like that as a, as a, as a, mechanism mm -hmm. so you hear about the results for this one yet or no no guess what let me see him peter finally took it down hey there he is yeah the, probably the probably the best player to to have never won a tournament that we knew of finally finally got there um what happened uh he played against rob and they drew and so they went on to the next round and Peter edged out Rob by like one point on the victory points. They, they use victory points as their, as their first tiebreaker. And it was like the very closest of margins, but Peter did it three Oh and one destruction soup, but a little bit different take on it this time. So his baseline is actually ogre maw tribes with a tyrant Bringing in and in, bringing in an Ard Boy boss, we saw that how effective that was at 135 points. Is yeah, a, really is a, solid, a super efficient, points. deadly melee unit. He's bringing in Manok the Cunning from from Cruel Boys Underworlds, <clears throat> and then with Manok he's able to bring Torka Tough Skull, Gicket and Shank, and because he's 
because he's his core warband is over Maw Tribes, he's able to take Quiv and Bushwhacker to fill out his chaff. So yeah, 950. The so extra not, cheap Noblars. Yeah. Yep. So 955 points, eight models. So see, obviously here. built for a divine blessing because you could have fit another Noblar in there if you wanted one. Uh, so obviously a couple of different ways to go there. The tyrant really doesn't need any help, so I imagine those points went elsewhere. So first of all, I love the tyrant. I love ogres. They're still as much as I haven't played them as much recently. They're still probably my favorite faction. Um, it's what I love about the tyrant is it doesn't matter what your opponent brings to the table. If you put the tyrant on the table, unless you're playing with monsters, you have the best melee monster on the table and it can go anywhere and fight anything. And I think there's a lot to be said for that. It's one of the reasons I like Varengard so much. It's like you, you get the Varengard on the table and there's a pretty good chance that like you can kind of dictate parts of the board. Tyrant is great. They're surprisingly quick with on the maw path and the two inch range. And then obviously four six four eight forty two wounds is like ridiculous. Can outduel just about anything in the game. Love the model. Obviously Peter sees something here because Peter's known for playing destruction soup that's heavy on the brew gets with blooms by gets as the base, and this is kind of a pivot. And I think it's really well constructed. Yeah, worth noting. So the tyrant. Also combos with all of the cruel boys and cunning and trap. So if you fall into the trap, you got a two inch range. Tyrant can reach out and touch somebody at uh, four six four eight. Real good. Yeah, absolutely. And I know that that Peter tends to favor those kind of synergistic list building. Also, you have Manok, who is has a very another two inch range along with Torka, who has two-inch range. So, this, you know, it is, is definitely a lot of spears. I think even Quiv has two-inch range. But, you know, built to take advantage of that with all of your, your spear units. Manok is just a, a solid fighter. Torka, Tough Skull, I, I, don't, I haven't seen as much, but a, a very solid stat line. We're talking, again, at 125 points. 3-4, 2-4 with two-inch range is very solid. Yeah, he doesn't, it's not like he has move three, he has move four. So, yep. yeah, he just a, a big pile of stats. Yep, yep. So, cool list. Getting advantage, taking advantage of that really cheap chaff that you can pull out of these factions, specifically out of their underworld boxes, and then just putting, like, just some real nasty fighters at the top the hard boy boss has like no wasted points right like it's all there in the attack profile and the tyrant is just a, a big bad dude so yeah just some real efficient killers and some really good chaff and then tie that around some synergy and that looks very much like a peter merson cabbage list to me yeah gicket and shank have six wounds i think still but they have toughness four as opposed to the typ typical toughness three on Nalars, so a little more yep. survivable yep and if you know peter <clears throat> you know he loves all of having lots of tricks right so mm -hmm. I, I didn't put all the abilities there but tyrant has on the maw path hard boy boss has charge you have you have a net bushweka has traps quiv doesn't do anything in this list but well just cheap you know, yeah he's just he's just there to hang out so and the other thing is the tyrant of course has bully of the first degree so if you get the hard boy boss stuck in combat the tyrant can always come up and, and give him the, the whip ability like the, you're whipping like a hard boy boss to get free attacks out of it so like that's That'd be good, pretty yeah. good or manic to cut in like there's there's a lot of damage you can squeeze out from free attack activations in this list too so yeah very cool yeah, showing up, showing off again at the, the power of the cruel boys in various shells here. <clears throat> yeah, very much so. So, you know, cruel boys have had a lot of the attention lately, but good old Iron Jaws very strong as well. So Rob took second place. Ooh, here you can see his, Yeah, you can see here. You can see his completed his completed Iron Jaws list. 
So he's got the the uh, orc mega boss. <clears throat> he's got the brute with uh, double choppa. Four Ard boys with choppa and shield. He's got the new sculpts there too, as you can see. A brew get, and he's actually this is the first appearance we've seen of a clawback as an ally. Yeah, that's Not the 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 new gorgers box. I don't even know the stats of the clawback off the top of my head. Well, you're in luck here. Hey. Hey. Yeah, that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, so a, what what that is, is that's basically a ogre button, a little bit faster, more wounds, but it's the ogre glutton attack profile, but on an alliable unit. Which is very cool. And of course, it's very fast comparative to a to a standard ogre. But like you get because you, normally you wouldn't be able to take that outside of 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 ogre faction. But now you have like that profile is available as an ally that's also like crazy fast because it has the gorger charge ability. So yep. very cool, good ally model. I think we'll probably see the clawback kicking around as a destruction option for a while. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of folks, like, if you wanted a really big hitter to as a destruction ally, you know, in about the 225-point range, Mega Boss was, was one of the guys you looked at, because Mega Boss can charge, too. Yep. Now, it doesn't I have five-inch move, base. Right, right. Now, Clawback, if you have the extra points, you're, I think you're going to see Clawback taking a lot of that, um, taking a lot of that space up now. Yeah, it, it, it solves two problems, right? You bring in, it gives you that heavy hitting attack profile and it gives you a lot of speed, which is nice at 235 points. So very cool. My, cool to see in the wild for the first time, the clawback. Yep. My only critique, the brute with the brute choppas. For 10 more points, you can get the brute with the gore hacker. <laughs> With a two inch range, three five two five, I think is the profile. Yeah, I like it a lot more. If you're gonna, if you're paying for a brute, you gotta. I think you gotta pay at least one hundred and fifty to get that. And Just the list to has ten points to spare. So. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. But, but yeah. apart from that, yeah, I, I love this list. <clears throat> Just good profiles. Just good attack profiles. Not yeah. too anything cute. But all, but all three of the heavy hitters do the job by themselves. You don't I love necessarily get eight models in there too. Yeah, yeah, eight models and the Ard Boys. You can just take the Chopa Shield version. They'll do a little bit of work, but really they're just going to get onto onto objectives and stay alive for the most part. You don't really need to to risk them. Yep, and the Clawbacks is going to run around the board just harassing whatever. And there you go. That's your strategy right there. All right, so we're seeing a lot of repeat names here. We here we got Javi again. So playing, going back to his Slanesh roots here. So this is a real solid list. So he's got the Lord of Pain as the leader here. Slake Slash, Slangor Fiend Blood, the 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 non-hero version of a Slangor. Three Bliss Brew Hamanak Hamanaculi. Right, but the plural would be homunculi. Homunculi, yeah. Got it. Homunculi. And he's also allying in a nice purple slash themed true blood as well. So seven models, only 925 points. So again, you can see Javi really taking advantage of the blessings in this case. True blood's really just one of those those units that make me wish that when I first bought into Warcry, instead of buying Iron Golems, that I bought or the Serpents of the Fang. No, that's not it. Splintered Fang. Splintered Fang. Splintered Fang. Yeah. So I wouldn't re really regret it because I don't think I, I think Iron Golems are really solid right now too. Sp True Blood is the All Star. He's the MVP of Splintered Fang. Nothing else really is. So, I don't really regret it. <laughs> yeah, you would you would you would have been you would have been regretting it regardless. Although you'd have a, some sweet true bloods. So yeah, I really want to pick his brain on this one, like the Lord of Pain here. Because at 225, you got Slangor Slakehorn. But yeah, he, he went for the Lord of Pain, four five, three five, twenty-five wounds, two hundred and twenty points, 
Slake Slash we know is great, great, great value for the points. The Fiend Blood, a little bit smaller, four four two five. Just an interesting mix of the of the Slanesh of the Slanesh heroes and and movers there. I know I know he was he was really liking the way the True Blood worked. Having the access to that automatic net was really strong for him. Uh, you get the charge ability on the on the on Slake Slash and the Fiend Bloods, which is good as well. And you have just the the cheapest chaff, the fi- the, the typical fifty five point Ghoul equivalent or Planes Runner equivalent chaff. But you have a good reaction that goes with them. So if they get if they take damage, you know you're they're never gonna you you don't really expect them to do much damage when they attack. But if they do happen to get ganked, then you, they can at least deal some damage back with the reaction. The shared pain really helps with that. You see, everybody is completely stunned and amazed. <laughs> the mind of Pavi. Yeah. Like, what's he thinking? Why Lord of Pain? Why not more Slangors? But it worked for him. Hard to argue with three and one. And what, is, what does the, the Slangor leader unit cost? How much is its points? He's 225. Yeah, that is, a, I mean, that is the question then, isn't it? So, obviously, again, we'd have to get him on. You could probably, I could probably just do a whole episode I can pick any one of the any, any one of these guys and probably start picking their brain about how they use blessings and the various the various applications for them now that they've used them so much. But you know, again, adding plus attacks, adding plus strength or in certain matchups to turn someone into a can opener. Lord of Pain, I guess if you go Lord of give Lord of Pain plus one attack that makes them five five three five. That's pretty scary. True Blood with plus one strength makes him four five two five. That's and then likewise with the Fiend Blood. So yeah, I mean it makes four four two four 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 two five. You don't really expect a lot of vote from those profiles, but once you start putting a point an extra point of strength on there, and it's pretty pretty affordable. The now you're starting to look at really kind of making someone dangerous. I need a probably need to just keep a, uh, a blessings cheat sheet here but uh, yeah plus one strength on a 20 wounder is 15 points so that's a low cost to pay to turn someone into a a, a, a reasonable threat against a, a higher toughness uh, model yeah wow i didn't know it was just 15 points i haven't kept up on the blessings i'm gonna have to drop off here actually though unfortunately all right <clears throat> Take it easy. Enjoy the rest Later. of the call. Later, Zach. Bye. Yeah, 15 points for plus one strength on a regular, 20 points on an elite. Attacks are much more expensive. 25 yes. points for a regular, 30 for an elite. Cool. And then finally, <clears throat> we have Gray again. So, again, East Coast represented here. He also won Best Painted with his war band, which is, which is amazing. So we got yeah, two, great. two storm fiends with doom flare gauntlets. One second. So yeah, we got Scabic again. Two storm fiends, one with doom flare gauntlets, one with rattling cannons. This is a more typical Skaven list that you see that kind of fills out most of the war band with the storm vermin with helper and shield. And he brings along Scritter for the ride. So Scritter the giant rat. 70 points, uh, 985 points, seven models, 15 points left to give someone extra strength or actually, yes, yeah, Gabbit could get extra strength for 15 points or extra wounds on one model. Yeah, very solid. I agree, Storm Vermin are, are solid. They're, they're tough. Your Doom Flayer Gauntlets are going to do a lot of damage in melee. Your Rat League. Guy could could do some range pressure, stand on one objective, meaningfully shoot at another one. Kind of a, a balanced list here. Plus yep. Scritter. Plus Scritter for the memes. <laughs> well, hey, fills the points. Uh, yeah, we highlight it here. He's Moon's got a couple eight. of things going. Yeah, he's got a couple he, of things going for him. He can sure scamper fast. Yep. yep. Moves eight. He can grab treasures. Yep. He can also befoul the land, just like Scabbit can. 
Yeah, I don't know how much you do that, but you can. Certainly on some object of some missions, it's probably pretty reasonable. Who has it's 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 Gore Chosen of Drom has Wound of the Land. That's what I was initially thinking of. Yes, they have Wound the Land. <clears throat> Which uh, is also a I don't I don't think it's a great ability, but it's certainly an interesting one. Yeah, it's it's definitely different than what we've seen before. But yeah. Seven models. Not a ton. Excuse me, but no glaring um, weakness. Yeah, but but relatively tough and some some good heavy hitters. I, I think it's very solid. I like Scabic, as we said before, a solid model. Yeah. So yeah, good stuff. So pretty. <clears throat> very very pretty. Yes. All right. Then one final picture from the tournament. There, there's the top three. They've coordinated their shirts. Rob, Peter, and Javi plus Mike are now known as three heroes, one chaff. I don't know which one is the chaff of the <laughs> of the bunch, but yeah, we we have we have a team for me here. So watch out. Why don't we have custom shirts? I have not I have not engaged the merchandising arm of Dayton Warcry Club <laughs> <laughs> yet. Yet. Yes. Yet. I, I certainly know how to, although I would have to find a different vendor because Redbubble the Redbubble store is still active. So I could pretty easily put that logo on a shirt or something like that, but they changed their 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 pricing model. To where they take a bigger cut of it, and they'll actually, I, I, I could actually stand to lose money right now if anyone buys Dayton Warcry, Warcry Club merch. Mm. They would actually take money out of my pocket. So <laughs> I actually need to get the store shut down and find another, find another alternate vendor. But uh, yeah, at some point in time, yes, the next venture that I that I start will be well merchandised again. You you hear heard it here first. Listeners, you can get your shirts soon. <laughs> Are we going to do the merch? Are we going to do merch? My, I mean, it's up to you. <laughs> You're back. You know what? I pr- probably should. I actually bought a Swolehammer t-shirt, too. I, <clears throat> the, the swore, the, shout out to the Swolehammer crew. They're, they're in Columbus now, if you hadn't heard, if you hadn't checked out their channel. So, <clears throat> yeah, I bought a Swolehammer shirt to, uh, to support them. So, hope, hope you guys are listening. Well, good stuff, good lists, and we're going to be doing another back-to-back episode on all the new stuff that's come out. Yep. I'm still putting that one together. Give me a little bit of time on that. We might record tomorrow night. But what else we got coming up? Busy weekend for Warcry because, so December 3rd, we have our store championship at Epic Loot. So this is coming up very, very soon. As of the time we're recording, in about three weeks or so, and actually, as of, as of the time of recording for the folks online with me right now, just remember that the Sunday we have a one more tournament practice session as well. Yep. Uh, yep. But for everyone listening online here, come on down to Dayton. Come to Epic Loop. We're going to be running uh, four rounds of Swiss. Remember, in Dayton, we don't do monsters. This will be using Salty Sea's title pack for missions. And the blessings rule will be in effect. So, uh, yeah, if someone wants to make the trip and you've been practicing with blessings, you can you can come on out for this. We actually do have a trophy, one of the organized play trophies from the 2.0 kit. So we're the, <clears throat> we have uh, plenty of prizes there. But yeah, come on out. Links are going to be in the description there. We got we're up on best coast pairings. Uh, the tourney pack is out there with some updates, uh, and then also a link to Salty Sea's missions as well. It would be a random selection of missions from that pack. But yeah, come on out. It's We always have a good time. It's it's a good scene. Everybody there is very welcoming, and we've had really great games and, and really well-painted models and just a really good showcase for the hobby. It's, it's, a, it's a good time. I'm really looking forward to it. i got to defend my, my title. That's right. Yep. Local, local champion. <clears throat> I'm coming for it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, all. I was your only loss last time, right? Yep. So, yeah, it's uh, it, it's really, it's good. It's obviously it's a store championship. Bring your competitive list, play competitive. There's, there's certainly no 
problem with that, but it's also just kind of a real relaxed and, and friendly atmosphere. So definitely worth coming out for if you live anywhere close by. Yep. I do have a side prize set up for, for someone who doesn't finish in the top three. <clears throat> so I'm kind of branching out a little bit and giving some extra prizes out as well. Good stuff. I mean, and you'll, get, you'll get to meet us, which is the greatest prize you could possibly get. That's right. Well, good time as always. Looking forward to the next event. Looking forward to the next episode. And we'll talk to you guys later. This brings us to a close for this episode of Dayton War Cry Club. Coming up soon, we'll be back for a follow-up talking about all the new additions to War Cry we've gotten in the last month. We'll cover the new cities of Sigmar, Naive's Black Talons, and we finally got rules for Underworld's Nether Maze Warbands. So tune in again to get our takes on those new profiles. In the meantime, you can always chat with us on the official Warcry Discord, link in the description below. You can find me there as War Machine. And you can find me there as Steve Forever. And I'm Fred Shred. Thanks for listening. Sorry, my kids are being assholes.